PUEs, known as therapeutic use exemptions, are commonly used in a variety of sports. According to UK Anti-Doping, TUEs are a means by which an athlete can obtain approval to use a prescribed prohibited substance or method for the treatment of a legitimate medical condition. But why are they an issue at the moment? In September 2016, the World Anti-Doping Agency database came under attack from a cyber hacking group. As a result, the TUE use and medical data of countless British athletes was released, including information about cyclist Chris Froome and boxer Nicola Adams. Another example is Sir Bradley Wiggins. The cyclist received numerous TUEs between 2008 and 2013 for treatment of asthma and allergies. Where these TUEs have been called into question is in regard to their timing. Intramuscular injections of triamcinolone acetonide were granted only days ahead of key competitions such as the Tour de France, which he went on to win the title for. Did his TUEs give him an unfair advantage over the other athletes? Would it be unethical to take TUEs away from athletes who may not be able to compete in their chosen sport without them? A particular example we will focus on is salbutamol. Salbutamol is a beta-2 adrenergic agonist, commonly used in the treatment of asthma. During an asthma attack, bronchospasms cause bronchi to contract and the lining of airways produces more mucus. Muscles around the airways also contract, resulting in the narrowing of the airways. This can lead to the display of symptoms including wheezing, coughing and shortness of breath. Highly selective beta-2 adrenergic receptors are found on the bronchial smooth muscle within the lungs. Salbutamol stimulates these specific receptors. The enzyme adenylcyclase is activated, which leads to the formation of cyclic AMP from ATP. High levels of cyclic AMP lead to the relaxation of the previously contracted bronchial smooth muscle, resulting in the dilation of bronchioles. Salbutamol has a duration time of 4-6 to six hours. The difference from person to person results from the different methods used to administer the drug. The controversial TUEs approved for Bradley Wiggins include the use of salbutamol and an intramuscular injection for the corticosteroid triamcinolone acetonide, allowing him to compete when detrimental health effects would otherwise be experienced. Is it possible that some TUEs can be performance enhancers? Possible ways of enhancing an athlete's performance could be by increasing endurance, improving their central nervous system such as alertness, improving their metabolism of lipids and carbohydrates, all increasing the overall performance of the athlete. This was tested in a study in 2001 which investigated the specific performance enhancing abilities of salbutamol. The study was conducted on 12 non-asthmatic triathletes. They were all given a dose of 400 micrograms of inhaled salbutamol 10 minutes before a 10 km time trial. Several indicators of health were measured, including oxygen uptake, lung function, endurance time for each exercise, and metabolic parameters. The study concluded that while salbutamol did improve respiratory adaptation, it had no significant effect on endurance and performance. So why is the use of TUEs controversial? Sport should be a fair contest for all, and allowing athletes to obtain TUEs in a legal way gives those who would otherwise be disadvantaged a fair chance. However, could TUEs possibly give you an advantage? 17% of cyclists in the 2008 Olympics claimed the use of salbutamol as a TUE for asthma treatment. However, these cyclists also won 29% of the medals. In this case, was it beneficial to claim the use of salbutamol rather than not use any TUEs? Without TUEs, some athletes will be unable to compete at such a high level, especially if all essential drugs are prohibited. Although the short-term use of TUEs is beneficial to health, could their long-term use cause further detriment to their health once the effects wear off? Why should athletes not be able to compete if they have a genetic disadvantage compared to athletes who do not require regular medication? However, athletes are important role models for many young, inspired athletes, and negative news coverage from the media regarding potential TUE abuse as performance enhancers might discourage them from sports. Overall, we have to consider if it was right for the private medical details of many elite athletes to be publicly scrutinised by the media, or is it important that this information is published by the World Anti-Doping Agency in order to monitor TUE granting and prevent their abuse? There are strict criteria for TUEs to be granted, which allows them to provide a fair chance for athletes to perform at their best level.